All right, hey everybody, this is Rosh, and you are watching FM9 Basics. This is a YouTube tutorial series I'm putting together to help new and experienced users program their Fractal products, including the FM9, the FM3, and the AxeFX3. So a little about myself. Uh, once again, my name is Rosh, and I'm a guitar player in guitar tech out here in the Los Angeles area. I build and program a lot of guitar rigs for a lot of different clients. Some of my clients include Steve Vai, Def Leppard, Melissa Etheridge, A Perfect Circle, Bush, Dweezil Zappa, and more. So I wanted to give back to the Fractal community and show some tips and tricks on how to program all the Fractal products, including the FM3, the AxeFX3, and in this case, the FM9. Uh, if you want to watch any of the uh, rest of these tutorials, uh, feel free to watch them on the rest of this YouTube channel, or you can visit fm3basics.com, fm9basics.com, and axfexbasics.com. So this video is going to be dealing mainly with uh, you know expression pedals. And so uh, a lot of new users are always uh, wondering about different ways to use an expression pedal and how to either get ex global expression pedals or how to control certain effects individually. And I wanted to make a tutorial, just kind of, you know, a comprehensive video to just kind of cover a bunch of uh, really common scenarios. Obviously, this video is not going to cover every single scenario that exists, but this should at least give a good starting point for a lot of new users who are uh, who just got an FM9. So the first thing we want to do, of course, is we want to plug an expression uh, pedal into our unit. I currently have a Roland EV5 expression pedal plugged into pedal one. And now one of the uh, things to keep an eye out on is that when you're plugging in an expression controller, you want to make sure that your expression pedal has a TRS cable going both into the expression pedal as well as going into your FM9. Um, your expression pedal will not work correctly if you use a standard quarter inch cable. So make sure it is a TRS cable. Um, you're usually looking for two stripes at the end of each tip of the cable. Um, rather than a TS cable, which only has one stripe, so two stripes. Sometimes these can also be referred to as stereo cables. Um, and you want to plug that into the expression jack of your expression pedal. And in my case, because I'm using a Roland EV5, it already has a TRS cable uh, you know, permanently attached to the expression pedal. And all you have to do is go, you know, it just has one end that you would plug right into the FM9. The other thing to uh, watch out for is that on the rear of the FM9, the pedal one jack is right below the headphone jack. So if you're constantly setting up for gigs and you're unplugging and replugging in your expression pedals, like I do, rather than just keeping them in, uh, one thing to watch out for is do not plug into the headphone jack, plug into the pedal one jack right below it. It is very common. Sometimes I'll have clients call me at sound check and they go, hey, my expression pedal's not working. But it's because they have it plugged into the headphone jack rather than the pedal jack. All right, so now that we got uh, the expression pedal plugged in, the first thing we want to do is we want to calibrate our expression pedal. So I'm going to go into the setup menu and you can't really calibrate on FM9 edit. You actually have to do it on the unit itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the setup menu and in the setup menu, uh, once you get there, after pushing the E knob, you're going to use the nav buttons and then you're going to go down to the uh, IO menu right here and then you're going to want to hit enter. And you're going to be presented with some screen here, depending on if you've been in the screen before or if you just booted up the unit. Um, you may find that this screen doesn't match, but all you're going to do is use the page left and right buttons right below the nav button to go to the pedal menu. And once you're in the pedal menu, you're going to be presented with a list of parameters. Now, you can have up to three expression pedals plugged into your FM9. So since I am plugged into pedal one, you can see that right there on the screen it says pedal one, and it's going to say type, calibrate pedal one, switch polarity, and uh, switch behavior. Now, since this is an expression pedal rather than a switching or latching pedal, I'm going to keep that on expression. And then I'm going to use the nav buttons and go below to where it says calibrate pedal one. Now, again, if you're trying to calibrate pedal two or pedal three, you want to obviously go to pedal uh, two or three, but in this case, I'm just calibrating pedal one. And then once I have that highlighted with the nav buttons, I'm going to hit enter and you're going to be presented with this screen. Now, this screen can be uh, a little confusing for some because as you can see that if I move my expression pedal back and forth, you're going to notice that it doesn't go all the way to the top. So the first thing that a lot of users 
feel like is, hey, something's wrong with my expression pedal. I, it's not going all the way to the top. The whole point of this screen is that it isn't supposed to go from end to end perfectly, especially depending on the type of expression pedal you have. What it is, is the FM9 is learning the entire range of motion through your expression pedal. So even if I move it just slightly versus all the way up here, doesn't matter if it goes end to end. Do not be concerned with this. Now, the most important thing to do after you've gone end to end and explored the entire range of motion on your expression pedal, you have to hit enter. Now, if you hit the exit, uh, the expression pedal is no longer going to like, uh, you know, know the range of motion in that. So the most important thing is when you're in the calibration screen, hit enter after you go through the range of motion. So now that the expression pedal is calibrated, you can of course hit the home button and go back to uh, the original preset screen that you're on. And now the expression pedal is going to be tied to pedal one. So for example, in FM9 edit, um, you'll notice that all the factory presets are actually going to be tied to external ones. So let's address this first. If I have a blank preset and I want to tie the my expression pedal to it. So for example, if I go to quick build and just bring a wah wah pedal in there, um, any uh, parameter that has this little icon right there, it looks like a little gold circle. You can right click on this and then it's going to ask you for the source. Now the source is currently tied to pedal one, um, not pedal two, not pedal three. And these are other parameters that you can tie the source to. But in the case of plugging directly into the FM9, you want to select pedal one. And then now you can see that the pedal one is being controlled by my expression pedal. I'm going through the entire range of motion, top to bottom, etc. And so this can function as a wah pedal. And of course, you know, you may want to use your expression pedal for a volume pedal. So in, in this case, if I wanted to use a volume pedal instead, uh, I'll replace that wah with a volume block. And again, if I wanted to control the volume, see this little icon right there, I would, of course, control that with pedal one. And again, this would now function as a volume pedal. So now one thing that happens, of course, that some users might be confused by is that all the factory presets come with the wah or some other expression, you know, some other effect that we can control by the expression pedal tied to external one. So of course we're in the first preset. If I go to the second preset, the wah pedal is still tied to external one. If I go to some random preset, let's go to the records right here. And you can see that there's a wah block in there. And again, it's tied to external one. So of course, if I am manipulating my expression pedal, you can kind of hear it in the background. I'm moving it up and down. It is not going to external one. So to use the factory presets, and if you don't want to set up anything and just use a global expression pedal, what you can do is you can tie the expression pedal that you just calibrated to the external one parameter. So here's how you would do that. On the unit, you're going to go ahead and go into the setup menu again and hit the E knob. And in this case, instead of going to the IO menu, you want to go to the MIDI remote menu. So I'm going to use the nav buttons and go down there, hit enter. And then you may be presented with a different screen than this, but this is the first tab. So if you're looking at the top of the screen, you can see all the different tabs. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to tab over, or I'm sorry, page over using the page left and right buttons. Use page right, and you want to page over to external. Now you'll see and be presented with a list of different external controllers. So those familiar with the um, more legacy fractal products, these were what we would tie to the expression controllers in the past. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to tie external controller one. So if you're looking on FM9 edit, we're going to tie our expression pedal to that external one. So what you can do, of course, is you can highlight this using the nav buttons, external control one, and you can use the value wheel to select what external controller you want. In this case, I'm going to select pedal one. You can also hit enter and it's going to go into learn mode. And then of course I can use my expression pedal and it'll learn that this is also pedal one. So either of those methods work, but the easiest is probably selecting pedal one from the value knob right there. And then now what you're going to notice is that the global expression pedal pedal one is now tied to the external one controller. 
and that is in all the factory presets and now it's going to function like a wah. So here's the wah pedal. Okay, so a lot of different ways to do that, but now in all the presets, the factory presets, the external controller is going to be controlled by the wah. So here is the 59 bass guy preset. Again, it becomes a wah pedal. And the cool thing is they're already tied to have auto engage on as well as turning off. So when they're tied to external one in a factory preset, as I move the expression pedal through its range, it's gonna turn on automatically. There's no switch like a standard crybaby wah. Um, so of course the wah pedal's off right now, but if I move the expression pedal forward, it's gonna turn on and you can kind of see it right there in FM9 edit. And then when it returns to the heel back toe up position, it's going to turn off automatically. So you have an, uh, basically a wah pedal that can just turn on and off at will because it is uh, tied to the expression pedal. Now, again, in a custom preset, or if you wanna tie, you know, tie the expression pedal to your own preset, you can either use external one or uh, pedal one now. So for example, if I go into the quick build and I have a wah, let's assume that this was like a custom preset I built, I can tie this to pedal one. And of course, it'll still function as normal, as you can see. And then of course, I can also tie this to external one because we just set that as well. So as you can see. So now either or will work. So now that you've set it up this way, your, uh, for example, your factory presets, if they have a wah pedal and they're tied to external one, they will turn on as normal. And then of course, if you have, let's say a custom preset, you can of course tie it to pedal one and it'll still function in the same manner. So this is a really useful thing to set up when you first get your unit. Now we're gonna revert this back to normal. Of course, these are uh, the values that you may wanna use. So if you are thinking of building a custom preset, the easiest way to get it into a custom preset would be of course to just copy and paste the block. You can copy this block. Let's say you have a custom preset here of your own sounds. You can paste the block and then it is going to have all the same parameters including the source for the modifier aka the expression pedal. So that's one way to use your uh, expression pedal um, to tie to the external uh, you know wah or whatever external one. Now some users may, instead of wanting that expression pedal to control the wah and all the factory presets, as well as your custom presets, you may want to set up like a global volume block instead. Um, so of course, what we're going to do is let's set up that expression pedal, the same one that we just tied together to the wah, and then let's remove those parameters. And in this case, we're going to do a global volume block or volume expression pedal. So the first thing that you're going to want to do of course, is go into the setup menu, hit E. And again, we're gonna go into the MIDI remote uh, parameters. So again, if these, you wanna highlight the MIDI remote in case your screen isn't there and you wanna hit enter. And in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna remove this external control from pedal one for a second. So if you are following along with this video, feel free to page over to the external tab and then just set external control to one because we're going to use this pedal now as a global volume pedal so that we can uh, you know, do that. So let's say you have one that's gonna be a global volume block or volume pedal and then another one that's gonna be like a global wah for your factory presets, you would wanna use a second expression pedal. So just follow along, but in this case, you know, set up pedal two for all this. So we're going to set this up for, uh, to do a global volume. And what we're going to do is instead of going to the external tab, we're going to use the page numbers and we're going to page to the other tab. Now you're going to be presented with a lot of different things on here. And what you're going to do is of course, you're going to want to go all the way down and then you can tie any of these, uh, volumes to the expression pedal. So for example, if I tie this to, 
pedal one. And again, I'm selecting it with the nav buttons using the uh, value wheel to select pedal one. You can of course hit enter and then you can have the FM9 learn where the expression pedal is. So I'm going to turn on pedal one as it's in learn mode. Now what's going to happen, as you can see on the unit, it says input one volume. So what's going to happen is it is actually controlling like basically the volume going into the input block. Now you're not going to see anything in here being manipulated when I do the volume. As you can see, I'm, or maybe you can hear in the background, I'm moving my expression pedal. Nothing is happening in the input block. But what you can hear is that right now, the, my volume is toe up, heel back. And as I bring in the volume pedal, you're gonna hear that the volume comes back in. So this is, uh, you know, functions the same way as if you're using an analog volume pedal going into the front of a guitar amp. So of course, one of the things to keep in mind for this is that it will reduce your gain, just like rolling off your volume knob. So for example, if I'm using like a high gain sound like this, if I roll off my volume knob, it's gonna clean up the guitar. And again, I'm playing a Les Paul. This is the bridge pickup. Okay, so I'm using my volume knob on my guitar to kind of clean up the amp. But having the uh, volume block, or I'm sorry, the expression pedal tied to the input volume is also gonna function in a very similar manner. It's again, uh, the way we wanna think about this is if we actually put a volume block in front of the amp and then we were using our expression pedal to turn this up and down. So what we're gonna do is, um, I'm gonna demonstrate that now with just using the volume block. So my guitar volume is at uh, fully up. And then again, I'm going to use the volume pedal to swell in just like if I was plugging an analog volume pedal into the front of an amp. So you can hear that if I have the volume pedal about halfway, It's pretty clean, clean-ish, I guess. And then I can actually control the amount of gain with my foot. Now, for some users, they may not like this behavior, of course, because you know, you may wanna adjust your volume without adjusting the gain of the amp. So what you would wanna do, of course, is instead of tying it to the input, you wanna tie it to the output. So we're gonna go back into the setup menu by hitting E, I'm, and again, if we want to navigate to the MIDI remote and then we want to use the page left and right numbers and page I'm sorry page left and right buttons and we want to page over to the other and it right now it's set to the input one volume so I'm going to take that off and instead of using the input volume I want to adjust the output volume so here instead of the input volume I'm going to go to the output one volume because that's what we were using in our preset I'm going to hit um, you can either use the value wheel to select the pedal of your choice, which is pedal one, or you can use the enter button and have it learn it. And again, I'm going to manipulate the pedal and it selects pedal one. And now instead of, you know, rolling off the volume at the input stage, you're going to be rolling off the volume at the output stage. So it would be similar behavior as going to the output block and turning this level up and down, or you can think of it as, and uh, I'll just replace this temporarily with a volume block, putting a volume block all the way at the very end and then turning the level up and down or the volume up and down, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna reset this preset. You can hear that with my guitar volume all the way at 10. It's got a lot of gain, oops. And I gotta push the pedal down. Okay, now the, the pedal's all the way forward, he, you know, toe down, heel up, whatever you want to call that. And as I bring it back, you'll notice that it doesn't change the gain. It's just changing the volume of whatever's in there. So this may be the behavior that you would rather have as a global volume pedal um, so that you can use your, vol uh, your volume knob on your guitar to control the amount of gain going into the amp. So I'm gonna roll my guitar volume about halfway. And then again, you can use the volume pedal to control the amount of volume coming out of the unit. And you're controlling the amount of gain with the volume knob on your guitar. So, uh, some users prefer this type of behavior versus the other. 
Um, and again, there's so many different variables that you can do to uh, kind of uh, you know go with this behavior. Now, one thing I want to uh, address with this is if you do make a global volume expression pedal, and you want to again visualize it as if it's controlling the level right here at the output stage, you'll notice that you can't your uh, the volume pedal if you have any type of time-based effects. What's going to happen is that it also mutes the time-based effects and adjust the, the volume of the time-based effects based on you know where the, the pedal is. So for example, here is a delay. And uh, I'm just going to turn the mix up a little bit so we can really hear it. So if I play a note and then I go back on the volume pedal, right now the volume pedal is all the way forward, fully up, um, you'll notice that it also mutes that delay. So you can see that this might not be the behavior you want. If you want to do any type of volume swelling, it's not really going to work with an expression pedal. As opposed to you know, the type of volume swell where if I strike my guitar with the volume knob off and I swell the volume knob up, you're going to get this kind of swelling effect. and it's the delay repeats with the swell happening. So now, again, if you want this type of swelling behavior without you know, losing the repeats like that, you're going to actually not be able to use a global expression pedal. What you need to do is you need to tie the expression pedal to a volume block and add it to the current preset that you're in. So for example, um, what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the global volume expression uh, temporarily. So I'm going to go into the setup. I'm going to go back into MIDI remote. And then again, if you're not on the same page, if you're following along at home, um, you want to use the page left and right buttons to go to the other. And instead of pedal one, I'm going to remove that using the value wheel. And I'm going to hit home. And again, right now, this uh, global expression pedal thing is not tied to anything anymore. So of course, if I play this and I move the pedal, nothing's going to happen. So I'm moving the pedal back and forth in the background. Obviously it's not doing anything, but it is still tied to, uh, it's still calibrated as pedal one. So uh, if you do want to have some type of swelling ability um, without affecting the gain of your uh, amplifier, you need to add a volume block into the preset. So for example, I'm just going to replace this flange with a volume block and uh, sorry, it's cut off in the video, but you can, of course, use uh, quick build, drag a volume block here, and it'll swap that out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie the source of this. So I'm going to right click this little parameter right here, as we talked about earlier in the video, and I'm going to tie that to pedal one. And as you can see, if I move my expression pedal back and forth, you're going to notice that it is controlling the parameter for volume in the volume block. So for example, you can see that knob right there moving and what's gonna happen is because of the placement of the volume block, it is after the amp, so it's not gonna affect the gain of the amp. So you get this type of behavior. And then if you have any time-based effects, you wanna put them after the volume block. So for example, these delays and reverbs right here or after the volume block. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strike a chord and then I'm gonna swell in the volume block. And you're gonna see this behavior where um, the time-based effects are after the volume block and after the amp, but the volume block is before the time-based effects. So here we go, we get this kind of swelling. So as you can see, even if I strike a note and then I turn off the volume pedal, you still get some delay repeats. So this is gonna be you know, my preferred position for a volume block and how I use the volume pedals. I do like using swelling effects. I do like the ability to, you know, maybe the band is uh, you know, playing the last note of the song you know, we're just going nuts at the end and then you hit that one last chord, the drummer goes da doom, da doom. And then you want that last note to like ring out 
but you don't want to turn off you know you don't want like any uh the delay repeats to like turn off or anything even after you turn off the volume pedal so there's no noise um that's a really great place but again you can also put the volume block in the front of an amp some users are more familiar with this type of behavior because of using analog volume pedals in the front of a guitar amp that's totally fine and again this volume block is still tied to expression pedal one the only difference is the placement is either before the amp or after the amp when it's before the amp not only is it going to control the gain but it's you can still get the swelling behavior if you like but it will affect the gain of the amp so for example um, if i put the volume block before the amp i have my guitar volume and tone knob all the way up on the bridge pickup you'll notice that at fully up the uh the gain of the friedman is pretty gainy but if i put the volume pedal about halfway it's cleaning up the amp and then uh, let me select the volume block so you can see so you can see that it's actually cleaning up the amp with the volume pedal some people do like this behavior um, again every user is going to be different and you can do this for example some users if they are used to using a clean amp with drive pedals what you can do of course is make sure that the volume block is after um, the drive pedals but before the amp so for example if we're playing a kind of like a clean sound actually let's go to the double verb i'm going to turn off this delay really quick and let's just move this i'm going to swap these uh, blocks for a minute and i'm going to put a volume pedal there or volume block rather tie that to pedal one and now since it's after the drive block it's going to still have the gain of the drive block into a clean amp but you're you know this but it's not going to like uh, affect the gain too much of an amp because you're using a clean amp so for example if i have this uh, t808 mod tone now if i roll off my guitar volume a little bit it's going to clean that up if i roll it all the way up it's full gain again but if I use the volume pedal, and let me select that really quick, if I have this after the drive block, maybe about halfway, it's not really affecting the gain of the drive pedal, but it is getting a little bit quieter. Obviously each amp is gonna be different because it's interacting with the amp, but that's another way to approach this. So having the volume block after your drives, but before the amp, and some users who um, are more familiar with like analog pedal boards, they, you know, for example, me, if I was using a clean amp and I was using just pedals for my different levels of gain, I usually always put my volume pedal after the drive blocks or after the uh, overdrive pedals and distortion pedals before it went into the clean amp. So that's another way to approach this. So lastly, if you have the volume block after your drives, but before the amp, you can still get the swelling behavior of um, a volume pedal with your time-based effects. So here is the volume pedal all the way off. Let me select that so you can visually see what's going on. And you still get that. That kind of swelling. And of course, if I turn on the drive, you can also get this kind of behavior. And that can be fam very familiar to some users who are used to using, you know, analog pedal boards into the front of a clean amp. So this is a, a pretty quick crash course in, through setting up an expression pedal and tying it to different effects, um, setting up a global expression pedal, setting up a global volume. Um, there are lots of different ways to use the expression pedal, um, you know, for whatever your preferences are. Um, but you know, there's so many scenarios. We can't cover them all in one video, but uh, in my experience, this is generally a lot of the different scenarios that most users would want. However, if you do need any help, any one-on-one -on -one, uh, consultations, by all means, I do remote sessions. I would be glad to help you out. Feel free to reach out to me directly if you need any help programming any of your fractal units. 
Um, other than that, I hope all is well and I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks.